A soldier of the 42nd Motorized Rifle Division of the occupying Russian army has been punished for using his personal car without the commander's permission. As a punishment, he poured gasoline on his Neva car and set it on fire. The footage has been shared by another Russian soldier in the area. The incident took place in the occupied Orkovsky district of Ukraine's Zaporizhia region. According to the Russian military, after the car caught fire, the fire spread to a wider area, including a nearby forest strip. As a result, four armored personnel carriers and two T-72 tanks of the occupying army located in the area were destroyed by fire. Ukraine has reached out to allies and international institutions over Kremlin plans to strike Ukrainian nuclear power facilities. As Ukrainian Foreign Minister Andriy Sibiga notes on the X network, according to Ukrainian intelligence, the Kremlin is preparing strikes on critical Ukrainian nuclear power facilities on the eve of winter. In particular, this concerns open switch gear at nuclear power plants and power transmission substations, which are critical for the safe operation of nuclear power. Sibiga emphasized that damage to these installations creates a high risk of a nuclear incident with global consequences. Ukrainian special services have passed this data to our partners. The IAEA also reported this. Russia is the only state that has seized a nuclear power plant in Europe, blackmailing the world. The Ukrainian peace formula contains provisions on ensuring radiological and nuclear safety. We call on all international organizations and states that respect the UN Charter to prevent the scenario of a terrorist state, he wrote. The minister expressed gratitude to the IAEA for the decision to expand the mission to a number of energy facilities in Ukraine. We ask the agency, partner countries and other organizations to implement the agreements as quickly as possible. We also call for ensuring a permanent expanded presence of the mission at all relevant facilities. Sibiga noted, at the same time, the head of the Center for Counteracting Disinformation at the National Security and Defense Council, Andrei Kovalenko, added that the Russian Federation already has plans for such strikes. Preparatory actions by the Russian army are already underway and plans for such strikes exist in Moscow. There is no time to delay the reaction. Kovalenko stated, The IAEA General Conference has approved a resolution that confirms that Ukrainian nuclear power plants, including the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia NPP, must operate under Ukraine's full sovereign control. The document was co-authored by 52 agency member countries. The IAEA called for the immediate withdrawal of military and other Russian personnel from the territory of the Zaporizhia NPP and the return of the station to the control of the Ukrainian authorities to ensure its safety. This month, it became known that the IAEA is expanding its monitoring missions in Ukraine to infrastructure facilities that have an impact on the safety of nuclear power plants. A Russian woman from the Kursk region has caused a stir on social media by sending an emotional video message to Putin. In her statement, the woman expressed dissatisfaction with the ongoing military actions and their consequences for the Russian border regions. After the Ukrainian armed forces began a military operation in the Kursk region, Russians felt the weight of the war and understood the feelings of Ukrainians, now demanding that the Russian authorities withdraw their army from Ukraine. Vladimir Vladimirovich, please take your troops out of Ukraine and it will leave us alone, said the crying woman. Tensions in the border regions of the Russian Federation are growing amid military actions. The military actions on the territory of Russia are causing serious damage to its infrastructure. 
burning houses and destroyed buildings have been repeatedly captured on video after the bombing of the Russian army, which is trying to push the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region. The appeal quickly shared on social media, causing a lot of controversy in Russia. Some users supported her courage, expressing agreement that Russia should leave Ukraine and that this is the fastest way to end the war. Others reproached her for criticizing the policy, arguing that such statements could be perceived as anti-patriotic. Russians' reaction to the Kursk region offensive closely resembles how they reacted to Yevgeny Prigozhin's mutiny a year ago. It is one of complete apathy and shifting the responsibility for solving the problem to the federal authorities and law enforcement. Ironically, this is the public reaction that the Kremlin itself has sought to achieve with all of its actions over the past 25 years, and especially the past three years. Its efforts have resulted in the average Russian being completely deprived of civic subjectivity, with any manifestation of it immediately punishable by criminal sentences or being forced out of the country under the threat of imprisonment. So the Kursk operation demonstrated that civic identity is a formality for Russians and that it does not grow stronger in times of crisis. Not even Kursk region residents lined up at military enlistment offices after Ukraine launched its attack on August the 6th. It would thus be strange to expect that men from the Zabaykalsky region in Siberia, for example, would line up to defend Kursk.